Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Well, Mr. Moore, you're as healthy as an ox. Your cholesterol is 127. Even your good to bad ratio is excellent. Your lungs are clear. Your PSA is right where it should be. And it says here, you've lost five pounds since I saw you last. In other words, whatever you're doing, keep it up. If all my patients were as healthy as you, I'd be out of business, he said with a snicker. So, Doc, there is nothing wrong with me? Steve, is there something in particular you're interested in? Just the blood work. He looked at the results again. Nothing. Absolutely nothing, he said closing my file. I'll see you next year. My nurse will make the appointment on your way out. Damn, that was a load off my mind. At least I won't have to do anything unwanted the two of them for giving me HIV or STD. I said to myself as I got into my car and headed back to work. That's one thing I won't have to worry about ever again. Now, if I could just narrow down the suspects. You see, I just found out for sure my loving wife Beth is cheating on me with one of our friends. After nine years of bliss, I'm plotting my revenge on her and her screw buddy, whomever it is. Am I in a hurry? Not really. I've got all the time in the world now that I know Beth hasn't infected me with some incurable disease and there's not a chance. I'm ever going to touch her again, at least not with my body. How did I find out, you ask? She told me. Well, I guess she did come right out and say, Steve I screwing so, and so, she did it a much more subtle way. It was early evening, somewhere in the area of 9 o'clock. It had been a pretty good day all in all, and I was feeling more than a little amorous. Babes, I said in my sexiest voice, you want to have a little fun tonight? Not tonight, she said, opening up her book. I'm a little tired and all I want to do is wind down. I can help you with that. How about a neck and back rub? Steve, all you want to do is get me naked and it's not going to work tonight, she said going back to her book. You're never in the mood anymore. Don't I do it for you anymore? Steve, sometime you just don't anymore, she said putting her book down on her lap. Well, maybe if we did it more than once every two or three weeks you could get back in the groove. Steve, what about no don't you understand? I don't want you tonight. It's that simple. I just stood there stunned. I couldn't believe what my loving wife had just told me. I grabbed my pillow and started out the bedroom. What are you going to do now, sulk? She shot back at me. Don't worry, I would bother you anymore, tonight or any time in the future. Since I don't do it for you anymore, I guess I'll just have to go elsewhere. I told her walking across the hall and into the spare room. I heard her call out my name once before I slammed the door and locked it. I'm done begging her for sex anymore. If she doesn't want me any longer, so be it. I went to sleep or tried to, but this was a huge deal in my eyes and that's all I thought about all night. I came downstairs just before 7 the next morning tired and still pissed. Steve, I'm sorry about what I said last night. I didn't mean it. And I was just tired. Maybe we can fool around tonight, she said with a smile. Beth, what are you doing? Throwing me a bone. Maybe if I lie there and let him do me it'll all blow over your thinking? Well F you, I wouldn't touch that goddamn body of yours if it was the last one on earth. I spewed at her. So you don't have to worry. I won't be asking you for sex any longer. I said grabbing my briefcase. I probably won't be home for dinner tonight. Just looking at you makes me sick to my stomach. With that I left. Beth must have left a hundred calls on my cell and business line that day. When she started emailing me after lunch I blocked her so I wouldn't have to worry about how sorry she was. She'd become a real a-hole over the last six months and I was tired of it. We had sex about once every two weeks and that was only after I'd almost had to shame her into it. There was always an excuse, and although some were probably legit, most weren't. I used to look forward to coming home and making love to her. I would set the mood with maybe a back or foot massage with scented oil, but now all she wanted to do was get it on and done with as soon as possible. I had dinner out by myself and hit a local watering hole after that. I sipped on a beer or two while watching the game and didn't get home until well after 11. I thought about sneaking in but thought what the hell I hadn't done anything wrong. When I went past our bedroom, Beth flung open the door. Where in the hell have you been? Out. What's it to you? That put her back on her heels. You didn't call or anything. You could have been lying dead in a ditch for all I knew. Well, I guess then you wouldn't have had to worry about me pawing at you anymore. I said slipping in the knife and turning it twice. If you'll excuse me, it's late and I need to get some sleep. I shut the door in her face and went to bed. I slept better that night. Are you going to honor us with your presence tonight at dinner? She asked in a shitty tone of voice. I haven't decided yet. Well, how in the hell am I going to know then? Well, sweetheart, let me put it to you this way. If I'm here, I'll eat here. And if I'm not, I won't. Does that about cover it? Well, Steve, let me know when you're done acting like a two-year-old. Beth, 
Why don't you go screw yourself? Wait a minute. You're probably doing that already unless you're getting it somewhere else, I said looking right at her. She was good, but not that damn good when I saw that look in her eye. How dare you accuse me of cheating on you, she now yelled at me. I then pushed it further. Beth, if you're not getting it from me, you must be getting it somewhere else. Steve, go to hell. I don't give a rat's ass if you ever come home for dinner ever again, she shouted at me before turning her back on me and walking away. All the way to work I kept remembering that look in her eye. Not horror that I'd accused her of cheating, but that of shock and surprise, like I'd touched an open nerve. On the internet you can find almost anything. I typed in surveillance equipment and 10,000 items popped up. I kept narrowing my search until I got down to a manageable 100 choices. Finally, I found what I was looking for. A remote surveillance camera with a recording device. It would handle up to four tiny cameras and with the extended memory chip would record up to five days, more than I needed. I ordered it and had it shipped overnight to my office. The next part would be tricky. You see, Beth didn't work and took care of our two kids, Dan who was seven and Amy who just turned five. So how to get her out of the house without her suspecting something was going to take some thinking. I didn't eat supper at home anymore but didn't stay out past eight o'clock. After all, I still needed to work. Now when I got home I ignored her and just hung out with my two kids. I've got to run to the store for a minute. If it's not too much of an imposition, do you think you can watch your children for about 20 minutes until I get back? Whatever, I said not even looking at her. As soon as she was down the driveway, I was out to the trunk of my car. I had a camera in the kitchen, in our bedroom, in the basement, and one out on the back porch. I also had just a voice-activated recorder that I planned on putting under the front seat of her car. I put the base station in an old trunk in the attic and all you could see was the power cord coming from it. I tested them each out and went back to the living room where the kids were watching a movie. It was unbelievable how small they actually were. I knew where I put each, but had a hard time even seeing them myself. The next few days should be interesting. Are you coming to end at Dick's Barbecue on Saturday? Beth asked Wednesday night. I'm going with or without so I really don't care one way or another. You see, we were in a group of eight couples, in the neighborhood, who once a month put on a barbecue at one of their houses. Every month it rotated from couple to couple and this week it was and in Dick's turn. It was a potluck and everyone brought something to share. You sweet talking girl, with an invitation like that how could I refuse you? I said as sarcastically as possible. We went together Saturday night, but she stayed the hell away from me all night. When we started playing couples games, I intentionally did everything I could to see that we came in last place. I watched the tapes for three weeks and saw nothing out of the ordinary. The only thing that piqued my interest was a conversation Beth had with one of her girlfriends. I just wished I could have heard both sides of the conversation. He still won't sleep with me and it's going on four weeks. I didn't think he'd last this long. I know I hurt his little ego, but he just won't ever leave me the hell alone. No, we're not getting a divorce. It's not that bad. Well, not yet anyway. I bought a new outfit yesterday at the mall that would bring a dead man back to life, and I plan on springing it on him tonight. If that doesn't work, nothing will. I'll give you a call tomorrow to tell you how he liked it. Well, at least I knew what she was planning tonight. I just wasn't sure how I was going to react. I guess I'll just have to play it by ear and see what happens. At least she's still trying. Maybe I was wrong about her cheating. Even with all my fancy electronics, I didn't have a shred of evidence that even remotely suggested it. I still ate out not wanting to change my pattern and throw her off her game, but I did get home about 7.30. My, you're home early for a change, she said with a smile. If you're still hungry, there's some meatloaf in the refrigerator and apple pie in the oven, she said casually fully knowing that apple pie was my favorite. She sure was bringing out all the big guns. At about 8.30, I carried two tired kids up to their bedrooms. I helped them get undressed and put them to bed while Beth cleaned up the kitchen. I gave them each a hug and kiss before turning out the lights. I then went downstairs and turned on the television in the living room and waited. I didn't have to wait long. She was right, that outfit would raise the dead. It was jet black and scarlet red with just enough material to hide what I didn't want hidden. Good Lord was the only thing that went through my mind. You got any extra time for me tonight? She asked walking into the room. I wanted to scream hell yes at the top of my lungs, but just calmly asked her what she had in mind. I have something in the bedroom that needs your attention, that is if you're not too busy or still angry with me. Well, let's go look. I don't have anything pressing at the moment, I said forgetting why I was even mad at her at this point. She took me by the hand, and by the time we hit the bedroom we were kissing. It was every bit as good as I'd remembered it. God damn it felt good. We made love twice and fell asleep in each other's arms. 
I had a wife again. Life was good. No, life was great. We were a couple again, and I even started cooking dinner so she could finish her other projects before we went to bed. We didn't do it every night, but we made sure Fridays were always open for date night. And if I hadn't gone into the attic to disconnect that damn tape player, I'd still be in wonderful bliss. I reset it and took the memory card to work. That's when my world ended. It was the fifth day on the tape, the day after our fabulous night. I deleted the other four days and just for kicks I decided to listen to it. Beth is probably going to call her girlfriends and tell them how I rocked her world that night, I said pumping myself up. But what I heard wasn't a conversation with one of her girlfriends, it was with someone else, a man. Well, I took care of our problem last night. It was so easy and Steve never knew what hit him. That outfit you bought me did the trick. I had him drooling all over me before we even got to her bedroom. I was going to let him do anything he wanted that night. I could hear laughing through the phone. I wanted to reach through the tape and strangle the two of them. Don't worry, I only need to give him a taste once in a while and that should keep him happy and content. I thought for sure he'd notice, but hell, it had been so long he probably couldn't remember what it used to feel like. I plan on keeping him happy and satisfied this way we'll have all the time in the world, she told whomever was speaking to on the other end of the line. We just have to be careful, we don't need to get caught now. You keep your wife happy, I'll keep my husband happy, and we can still find more than enough time for ourselves. Maybe we'll be able to sneak away at the Saturday barbecue for a little fun. I love a challenge. Well, let me go. I've got dinner to prepare, and the kids will be home soon. Of course not. I gave him some the day before yesterday. I'll just tell him I've got my period, he'll never know. Beth said hanging up on him and our marriage. I watched and listened to the tape at least three more times hoping to get a clue to who was on the other end of the phone. The only thing I knew for sure, it was someone I knew, a friend, if you could call someone that who was banging your wife. At least I reset everything before I left, I thought to myself. Even without the chip, I could get 12 hours on the small mainframe the unit came with. I guess it's back to recording everything again, I said as I clenched my fists. My payback is going to be so complete, they're going to wish they'd never been born. Of course I didn't have a clue yet what it was going to be, but I had time. I wanted to savor what I was about to do. The first thing I did was to get checked out. There was too much shit out there, and STD was the first thing that popped into my head. Just my luck. She probably gave me STD, and I'm going to die. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. My next task was to figure out who the culprit was. On a pad of paper, I wrote the names of the seven couples we always hung with. At first glance, I thought there was no way it could be any one of them. These are our good friends. I've known them each for over three years. How could one of these guys be doing my wife? It's not possible. But it was. Our next-door neighbors and and Dick were your typical suburban couple. They were in their early thirties, same as us and happy as two could be. Hell, Dick was probably my best friend and he loved Beth, but maybe too much, I started to think. Mary and Ron were the oldest of our group. They were both pushing 50. With Ron's bad heart, no way he was banging Beth. I crossed him off my list. I next thought about Sue and Carl and started to see where Carl could be a suspect and then remembered that they were on a cruise at the time of that call to Beth. Unless he was calling from the cruise ship, which was highly unlikely, he was also out. Sonia and Jerome were the newest couple to our group. They moved into our neighborhood from Chicago about three years ago. He was a sales rep for a drug company and was always on the road. We'd know Betty and Andy for about five years. Betty always had to watch Andy at our get-togethers because he liked his beer. More than once someone had to help him home. When he got drunk he flirted with the ladies but hell most of the husbands did. I thought about keeping him on the list but figured a drunk couldn't be that good in bed. But how about when he sobered up? So, I left him on. Of all the couples, I knew it wasn't Vicky and Mike. They were still in the newlywed stage of their marriage, even after six years. More than once someone said we'd have to hose the two of them down as they exchanged lips or got more than friendly in the hot tub at one of the houses. I envied the two of them. Beth and I'd been married nine years and compared to the two of them we acted like we'd been married fifty, well her anyway. I didn't even have to think twice about keeping Chris on my list. Donna and Chris were nice but were kind of aloof at times. They had money and at times loved to show it off. More than once I had to bite my tongue at what Chris did or said. He was kind of an arrogant prick but Beth seemed to like him. Well she seemed to anyway. Maybe it was his money she liked. Donna and Chris didn't seem to connect with one another and maybe there was trouble in paradise. I circled Chris's name. Looking at the list I saw three names. One of which I couldn't believe I'd included on my list. 
Dick was my best friend, but you always heard stories of the best friend doing your wife behind your back. Andy was basically a no the more I thought about it, and Chris was a definite yes. It was still another week before our monthly outing, and I needed to somehow find out more details about each. Steve, you still going to have Carl paint the other two rooms upstairs? Beth asked when I got home from work. I feel like we took advantage of him the last time when he did the other two bedrooms. He charged me for paint and a case of beer, and that was all. I did slip Sue a couple hundred dollars before they went on their cruise. I told her friendship was one thing, but business was business. Let me think about it. There's no real hurry with the kids' rooms is there. Well, we've got the barbecue next, and I want the house to look nice. Babes, the house always looks nice. Who in the hell is going to go upstairs and look at the paint on our walls? Steve, it's a woman thing, okay? Stupid witch, she's going to have more to worry about than paint when I figure out who she's doing. At the party, I watched all the guys like a hawk. Andy was downing the beers like water and Dick was being nice and helping Beth put out all the food on the deck tables. Chris was his arrogant self, and if I was reading Beth's body language right, she was getting turned off about his explaining about how he'd made a killing on Apple computer stock. Unless they were putting up a good front, Carl was falling down a notch or two on my list. With Carl and Andy seeming more and more unlikely candidates that left my good buddy Dick as my prime suspect. After the party, and then Dick stayed over to help us clean up. Good party, wouldn't you say? I asked Dick. Yeah, it looks like everyone had a good time, especially Andy, Dick said with a snicker. Betty threw him an elbow after his third beer and told him if he got drunk again tonight he was sleeping on the couch. He must have nursed that last beer for two damn hours. We both laughed. Steve, Dick said looking around to see that no one was in hearing distance. Can you keep a big secret, even from Beth? I nodded yes. I'm fixing to take my wife on a second honeymoon. When we first got married, we didn't have any money, so we just stayed in a hotel for a long weekend. I've booked a seven-day cruise for us, and it leaves in two weeks. I haven't said a word to, and but told her boss all about it so she could get the time off. I just stared at him now in disbelief. In my warped mind, he'd moved up to numero uno, and now he was telling me about taking his wife on a second honeymoon. Steve, I just need you to look after my place. Her mom is going to watch the kids, but if you could just look in once or twice, I'd appreciate it. And is going to go nuts when she finds out, he said with this huge grin. We may not even make it out of our room, but at least I got one with a balcony so we'll see some of the sights. You dog, I said to him. How long have you been planning this? I've been saving for almost six months. I almost shit when Sue and Carl went on theirs and in lamented about their good luck. Hell, when Sue called and on her cell phone and emailed her a picture of the Mexican pyramids, I thought I'd bust a gut. Those two almost ruined my surprise. Dick, how could Sue call in? Steve, hello? There are cell towers everywhere now, and if not, have you ever heard of satellites? It's expensive as hell, but you can call anywhere in the world now from your cell phone. But if you think I'm going to do anything like that, don't count on it. I plan on being busy doing other things if you know what I mean. All right, call me stupid. In my mind, I crossed off Dick who shouldn't have ever been on the list in the first place. That left Andy and Chris who both seemed unlikely candidates. Jesus Christ, who in the hell was Beth doing? About three in the morning, it finally hit me, Carl. At work the next day, I put two and two together and came up with Carl. He was a self-employed painter and made his own hours. His wife worked in an office so he could come and go as he pleased. Since Beth didn't work, they could get together during the day and no one would be the wiser. Hell, it probably started when he painted our upstairs bedroom six months ago, and Beth probably did him in our goddamn bed. The more I thought about it, the madder I got. Even though I felt like putting a bullet in their heads, I didn't want to go to jail and I had the kids to think about. Beth, now that I think about it, why don't we have Carl paint the last two rooms? This way the whole upstairs will be done. If you don't mind, can you give him a call and set it up? But tell him up front I intend to pay him for his work this time. I told Beth when I called her from my office. We may even want to re-carpet those rooms while we're at it. Steve, one thing at a time, you know we're not made of money. Let's get the walls done, and then we can worry about floor coverings. I guess you're right, babes. I don't know what I'd do without you. I said even though I wanted to puke. You're right. You were lucky to have me. Two days later in my office, with my door shut I listened to their conversation. Honey, you'll never guess what. Steve wants you to paint the other two bedrooms upstairs. Isn't that wonderful? I guess you plan on paying me the same way as you did last time? Carl replied. You can bet on that. But this time, there won't be any need for flirting. It'll be nice not to have to sneak around for a change. This way you can come over after the kids go to school and we can take all the time we need. 
I like when you have sex with me in my bed. It makes me feel so naughty when Steve and I do it on top of those same sheets, she laughed. But Beth, remember, I still have to paint the damn rooms. Hell, how long can that take? A couple of hours? I plan on making this project last at least a week. We haven't done it three days in a row ever. Beth, I still have to work for a living. I can't simply come by every day and put the meat to you. Why don't you get your husband to take up some of the slack? He's useless and too damn predictable. Beth, are one evil witch you know that? Just remember, I'm only your evil witch. Remember that. Thank God they ended it after that. I thought I was going to puke. It was now time to figure out a plan that put both of them down for the count. Carl would be easy. I'd send a video to his wife, and he'd be paying for the rest of his life. But I wanted more than just that from the two cheaters. They'd made a fool out of me, and I wanted them to feel the pain every time they thought about what they'd done. I wanted my pound of flesh. If I just divorced Beth, most likely she'd get everything even if she were a cheating 304. That meant she'd get the kids, the house, and I'd be paying for the next 13 years and she'd still get to screw around. A bullet in the head would take her out of the picture, but I didn't have that in me, so I needed something in between. Damn cramps, Beth said taking three Tylenol. You'd think they'd allow us to get something stronger over the counter to handle these fig gin cramps. Why don't you go to the doctor and get something stronger? Don't you think I've tried? That doctor just prescribed some ultra aspirin. If he had a uterus, he'd know what we went through every month, she said leaning against the bathroom counter. She'd given me an idea, but I didn't have a clue how to make it happen, but I'd find a way. There was one part of town no God-fearing, self-respecting person went unless you were looking for what was sold there. And that was everything. And I do mean everything. I got my old work truck and in a raggedish shirt and jeans I made the trip. I wasn't sure what I wanted really, but I had a pretty good idea. I figured I'd have to find someone who knew the ropes there, so I picked up a sex worker from the streets. You're not a cop, are you? She asked. Do I look like a cop? She gave me a price breakup of her services popping her gum. Then I asked. You know where I can score a few joints and some crack? She was surprised. You don't seem to be the type. It's not for me, but my wife. She says that when she's high, sex is a lot better. I figure I'll get her a few things and we can try them all out. For a second, I thought she was going to bolt out from the truck. How much money you got? Enough for a taste anyway, I told her. I don't usually do this, but since you're going to give me an extra 50, I just might help you score, she said lighting up a small joint. You want a hit? She said passing it to me. Can't. I've got asthma and it would probably kill me. Well, give me 50 and go where I tell you, she instructed. I gave her two 20s and a 10 and drove. About five minutes later, we pulled up behind a house that was basically falling down shack. Give me 200 and wait here. Leave the windows up and keep the doors locked. If anyone comes up to the window, ignore them. And if he pulls out a gun, well, man, you're on your own, she said laughing. I knew I was probably making a big mistake, but I did it anyway. Just hurry, I asked. Don't worry, lover. I won't stiff you. She said getting out and walking through the door. It felt like she'd been gone for a damn hour. More than once I almost left thinking she'd probably gone out the front door and left me. When she came back out I breathed a sigh of relief. Honey, drive, is all she said looking around, I guess for cops. I got you three nice rocks of crack and three joints, she said smiling. But it's going to cost you another twenty. But you said. I started to say and then thought better of it. I gave her the money, she gave me the stuff, and we both got what we wanted out of the arrangement. I put everything in a plastic bag under the seat. I drove extra cautious all the way back to work, switched cars, clothing, and with my stash headed for home. For about $300, I'd get my revenge on the both of them. I planned a two-prong approach. I'd nail Carl first, then come back and get Beth when she felt safe. Thursday, I picked up a prepaid cell phone on my way home from work. I figured if I got there early enough, I could catch him before he left. When I pulled into the driveway and saw his truck and knew I was in. I broke out one of his taillights and put the three joints in a bag under the seat. I walked into the kitchen as he was sucking down one of my beers talking to Beth. Hey buddy, how's the job going? I asked Carl looking at Beth for any telltale signs she was doing him. Should be done by tomorrow night. I just need to swing by Home Depot and pick up another quart of trim paint, he said finishing his beer. Here, let me get you another, I said getting both him and me one. Remember I'm paying you in cash this time. I said giving him $320 bills. I'll give you the rest tomorrow. I spent some of it on the way home, but I think you know I'm good for it. I said with a big smile. We shot the shit and just before he left I made up an excuse that I'd forgotten to pick up something at the store and would be back shortly. 
I thanked Carl for his help and walked out. I was down the street when he passed me getting on the main drag. 911, what is your emergency? The operator asked. There's this guy in a white pickup selling drugs to kids in my neighborhood. I told him to leave, and he said he could sell his shit wherever he wanted to. I've got him in front of me right now, and we're driving down Main Street just past Marshall. His license number is DL5512, and like I said, it's a white Chevy with a broken right tail light. I hung up and waited. We drove and drove until I figured my plan wasn't going to work. A block before the Home Depot exit, a cop pulled him over, and then another one pulled right in behind him. The first cop went up to his truck and I guess said something about his broken tail light as Carl got out and they walked to the back of his pickup. When the second cop brought out a dog, I pumped my fist in the air. Thinking he had nothing to hide, Carl opened his truck door and I guess gave him permission to search his vehicle. Those dogs are good as he found the joints in less than a minute. I was loving every second of it when they handcuffed Carl and put him in the back of the police car. I'd seen enough, so with a big smile on my face I headed for home. Carl didn't make the news but his picture was posted online under the county arrest website. You'd be surprised how many people have nothing better to do than to look up shit like that on the computer. Someone in the neighborhood saw it, and the news spread like wildfire, especially since he was charged with drug possession and distribution. I knew the possession would stick, but hell, he'd never get convicted for distribution with only three joints, but he did have the $300 in cash that I gave him. Hell, he'd be lucky to get any real jail time by the time it was over but the exposure was what I was looking for, and he got that. Sue, if there is anything I can do to help, please let me know. I told her. I can't believe that it happened. The last time I saw him was when he and Beth were having a beer in our kitchen when I came home early that day. Steve, I never knew Carl even smoked pot. He says it wasn't his, but it was his truck. I'm not that naive. I figured he'd be done with your house by Wednesday. Sometimes I just don't understand him, she said angrily. Well. If you need anything, you know where I live. She thanked me again. Carl was the brunt of jokes and conversation at our next get-together. Sue didn't show either. I didn't blame her. It was there I put the second phase of my plan into play. All night long, I sprinkled crack powder into Beth's drink. I made sure there was plenty of alcohol in them, so she couldn't taste the difference. When I told her that I'd forgotten the salad she'd made, she got pissed, especially since I told her I was too drunk to drive. I'm sorry, honey. Here, let me get your purse and keys. I said going into Betty and Andy's bedroom where our coats and everything else was. I dropped in the two vials with the last two rocks of crack and went out and gave Beth her keys and purse. Steve, you owe me big time for this. I'll expect at least an hour foot massage when we get home, she said grabbing her purse. There was only one way to get to our house from Betty and Andy's. As soon as she pulled down the driveway, I did it again. 911, what's your emergency? There's a crazy woman driving a dark blue Toyota down Wilmore Street. She cut me off and knocked down two mailboxes almost hitting my kids. I don't know if she's drunk or high, but you've got to stop her. I hung up and destroyed the phone. Beth never came back with the salad. Betty, she's not answering her cell or the house phone, I said in a worried tone. It's been over an hour. I hope she wasn't in an accident. Steve, why don't I drive you home and let Andy drive around? Maybe she just lost her phone and is stranded somewhere. Come on, let's see if we can find her. Betty and I drove up to a dark house. I used my spare key to open the door and found the bowl of salad on the kitchen counter where I'd left it. I guess she never made it home. While Betty checked with Andy, I could see the light flashing on our answering machine. The first message was from my parents saying that they weren't bringing my kids back until 9 because they were going out to dinner. The second one was from Beth. There was a lot of crying and pleading for me to come get her because she'd been picked up for driving under the influence and possession of crack cocaine. Betty, she's been arrested for possession of drugs, I said in my best surprised tone of voice. I don't understand. Beth doesn't do drugs. What the hell is going on? Steve, where are your children? At my mom's, I replied. Why don't you call her and tell her to keep the kids and you, and I can go down to the station and straighten this mess out. I made the call and we left. I can't believe this is happening. First Carl and now Beth. What the hell is going on? I've never seen her take anything stronger than aspirins even though she talked about wanting something stronger for her monthly cramps. But she wouldn't do this, would she? Beth was being held on possession and it would take me 24 hours to get her out. Beth, why are you doing drugs? Did Carl get you into it? How could you do this to us? I said loud enough that Betty could hear. Steve, this is a huge mistake. I promise you I'm not doing drugs. I don't know how they got into my purse. 
Someone must have planted them on me. Beth, you're saying one of our friends at the party planted cocaine on you? Do you really expect me to believe that? Steve, you have to. I'm innocent. Well, I won't be able to get you out until Monday when I can get the cash from the bank. You'd better think about what you've done and have answers for me on Monday, I told her in an angry tone. Steve, listen to me. I don't do drugs. You have to believe me. Do you think I'd lie to you? You'd better not be lying to me, Beth. And if you are, there will be consequences. I'm going to have Betty take me home so I can get the kids from mom's. And don't worry, Betty is the only one who knows you're in jail. I left a crying Beth. It was all coming together. When my mom brought the kids back, I told her that Beth had been picked up by the police for possession of drugs. She thought I was joking until I told her I was dead serious. She's been acting weird for a while. Maybe something's going on that I don't know about? I told her. Steve, I know Beth. This has to be just a big misunderstandings, you'll see. But it wasn't I saw to that. With the kids tucked away, I reviewed this week's tape. It was as I suspected, Carl and Beth were having a full-blown affair. The sex bothered me a lot, especially at what they were doing, but the lying and her belittling me to Carl only drove in the stake deeper. I could only watch it so long, especially after she begged him to do things she told me were totally disgusting. I made three copies of the tape and went to bed. Mom said she'd look after the kids until Beth got out. I went to work and met with my boss. I gave him the two-cent rundown and said I'd probably be divorcing Beth. He told me to take all the time in the world and not to worry about my job because it would still be here when I took care of business at home. Lawyers are like sharks, especially if there is blood in the water. I went over everything starting with her being picked up and then handed him the tape. I took this off our home security system. You can't imagine my surprise when I was scanning the tapes to see if I could see Beth taking any drugs when I found out she was having an affair with the husband of one of our good friends. Steve, it happens all the time, he told me. I just want it done and over with. I want the house, custody of my kids, and I sure as hell don't want to pay any alimony to that cheating 304. Don't worry, with what you've given me, it should be pretty much a slam dunk. Do you think, what's his name, he said looking at his notes. Carl's wife is going to divorce her husband. I haven't talked to Sue, but I guess I can ask. Tell her, I'll give her a 20% discount if she's interested. I can use the same evidence and we can do both at the same time. He gave me his card, and I said I'd talk to her. My next stop was at Beth's parents' house. June and Hank were good people even if their daughter was a shit. Steve, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be at work or something? June asked. I need to talk to you both for a few minutes. I told them about the arrest, the tape, which I gave them a copy, and that I was planning on divorcing their daughter. Steve, can't you two go to counseling or something? You guys love each other. You can get past this in time. Hank pleaded with me. Look at the tape and ask yourself if this was your wife. Could you forgive her? I can't, and I think you'll agree. Also, I don't plan on bailing her out of jail. Her bail is $3,000, and since it's her fault I've pulled money out of savings to cover it. Tell her I don't want her back. Ever. I'll drop off her things tomorrow morning, and I'd appreciate it, if she wasn't here when I do. He understood. Changing the locks, splitting our savings and checking accounts, and finally packing up her clothes took most of the day. With mom picking up the kids at school and taking them to her house for dinner, it gave me time to put my last plan into play. I cracked a cold one and picked up my cell phone. Sue, Steve here. I open with. I need to talk with you alone tonight if possible. Steve, we're just getting ready to sit down for dinner. Sue, any time tonight will work. I just need about an hour of your time. What's it about? She asked. This is something I don't want to discuss it over the phone if you don't mind. Well, why don't I stop over just before 8? Will that work? I'll be here waiting. She told me she had to go, but would see me later. All right. What's so important that we had to do it tonight? Sue, Beth was picked up for possession of cocaine Saturday night. Oh my God, Steve. She's in jail? Sue, that's not the half of it. Sunday, I started going through our house security tapes to check if I could see her using drugs and I found some else. I said leading her into the living room. I hit play on our DVD and waited for her reaction. Oh my God is all she said as she watched her husband having sex with my wife. I stopped the tape 30 seconds later. I see you were as surprised as I was. That cheating creep and after I thought that everything was getting back to normal. I just thought that you should know. I made you a copy, I said ejecting it and handing it to her. After the fist 20 minutes I turned it off, I just could watch it any longer. I'm divorcing Beth and met with an attorney this afternoon, I said giving her his card. He said he'd give you a 20% discount if you were interested but she wasn't hearing me. 
Sue is not a big woman, but I don't think I'd want her mad at me. There was a lot of swearing, and when she called Beth choice names, I just agreed with her. Do you have anything to drink? Beer? Wine? Something stronger? Wine works, she replied. I knew something was going on, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. Now I know why he was in such a good mood when you hired him to paint those rooms, she yelled downing her glass and going for a refill. My attorney told me to tell you not to get into it with him while you're angry. He's not sure how Carl's going to react. He suggested that you call the police and have him removed, just to be safe. That prick doesn't have the balls to hit me, but you're probably right. We talked for the next 45 minutes. I felt bad, not for Carl, but for Sue and her little girl. She called the police, gave them a rundown of what was happening, and they said that they would have someone there in 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, Sue, I told her. Don't be sorry, you weren't the one wandering around. They were, she said looking at my lawyer's card. Tell him I'll take him up on his offer, and I'll give him a call tomorrow. Are you okay to drive? I asked. I'm fine, but I know someone who won't be in 10 minutes. Steve, I'll be in touch. I pity that man. She's going to tear him a new hole. I dropped off Beth's clothes Tuesday morning. Her mom was at the jail bailing her out as we unloaded the 12 garbage bags of clothes into their garage. Steve, I watched two minutes of the tape, and you were right. I wouldn't take her back either. Hell, I don't even want her here, but she's got no place to go. I thanked him and left. It started three hours later. Beth left call after call on both the house phone and my cell. I listened to a few of them, but they were all about the same. I'm sorry, Carl seduced me, and it wasn't my drugs, as she pleaded for forgiveness. It wasn't going to happen. Sue kicked out Carl and got a restraining order. He was allowed to pick up his clothes and work tools, but that was about it. He got to the bank account before Sue and took out about 75%. She was pissed. We met with our attorney together and signed the papers. He said that there should be problem to get what we were asking for, which was about everything. Carl didn't fight it. He knew he was screwed so he just signed over everything and gave Sue back most of the money he took. Beth, on the other hand, fought it. She wanted custody and support but after more than a little arm twisting her lawyer convinced her to give it up. I gave her visitation rights but not overnight stays. In five months it was all over. Sue and I did bond, but it never got past that. We are good friends and I kept it that way. I still get a lot of calls from my ex-wife but I choose to ignore I plan to get into therapy to calm down my nerves and plan for my future. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comments section below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.